but on this computer. Okay. Let me make you the host. Change host. Okay. So I believe now you can uh, share your screen, Anusa. Okay. you're able to see my screen right yes i am able to see your screen guys you are you guys are able to see the screen yes cool sounds good okay let me start so hi everyone um as sonic mentioned this is anusha so i work as a software engineer for providence health in seattle so uh today i'm going to share one of my uh personal works which i started while i was doing my undergrad and um, left in between and started again a couple of months back. So it's about how a fingerprint can be used to access an uh, ATM machine. So uh, this is one of the projects that I carried out as mentioned in my bachelor's. And uh, for this uh, particular project, I have a national award back in India. And uh, it was uh, rated as one of the uh, top 10 ideas in the country. So uh, currently my uh, friend and I are working on getting a patent um, here in, in, in the US. So, well, let's get into it. Um, so fingerprint recognition is, it, it refers to the automated method of verifying a match between two human fingerprints. So uh, a, a fingerprints are one of the many forms of uh, biometric, biometrics used to identify individuals and uh, verify their identity. So here in this uh, project, uh, we use uh, digital image processing. So digital image processing is a process of manipulating images in a digital computer. So this process can be achieved by uh, developing a computer-based algorithm in order to process uh, the, in, the input images. So uh, this technology is widely used in, uh, in digital uh, image operations like uh, e e image extraction, pattern recognition, uh, morphology, segmentation, and many other um, uses as well. So basically a fingerprint as we see is made up of um, a many series of ridges and valleys, which is the technical word for all the lines that we see in our fingerprint. So, um, so here, is a closer look at a fingerprint. So basically a fingerprint is made of series of ridges and valleys. Those are the lines that we see in our finger. So they have a long, they have long been used for um, identification because of their immutability and individuality. So immutability is uh, referring to the permanent and unchanging character of the pattern on each finger. And individuality refers to the uniqueness of the ridge details across the individuals. So the uniqueness of a fingerprint can be determined um, by the pattern of the ridges and furrows, as well as by the features called minutia. So minutia is, uh, uh, is, is abnormal points on, on the ridges. So um, the lines where uh, the, we see the fingerprints ending are uh, called the minutia. So this project is based on that. So we use minutia based algorithm to scan the fingerprint from the original image and make the comparison and allow or access, uh, allow or deny the access to the ATM machine. So as I mentioned, uh, here we use minutia. So typical fingerprint recognition methods um, in, in, in the past have been using feature-based matching where minutia here mostly focuses on rich endings and rich bifurcations. Um, which are extracted from the registered fingerprint image, which is the original in, uh, input uh, finger, fingerprint input that the scanner reads uh, between that and the one stored in the database. While um, this application focuses on uh, ATM. So while a user gives their fingerprint into, uh, into the bank account. So here, as we see here, so minutia based techniques represent the fingerprint by its local features like the terminations and bifurcations. So two fingerprints match if their minutia points match. So this is the basic uh, concept of this algorithm. So to achieve good minutia extraction and fingerprints with varying, varying quality. So we cannot expect all the uh, biometric scanner to be accurate. So the images that we capture from the reader would have been carrying a, a different quality. 
So in order to match the accurate minutia points, we do the pre-processing in form of image enhancement and binarization. And then we do the evaluation of the minutia points. So minutia markings with um, false minutia removals are also uh, used in this method. So once we enhance the uh, image and binarize the image, we might still have some noise in the image. So those are uh, also removed in this, uh, in this algorithm that we use in this project. So um, this algorithm is uh, capable of finding the correspondence between the input minutia pattern and the stored template minutia pattern without having an exhaustive search. So performance of this uh, system is then evaluated on the database with fingerprints from uh, which we obtain from different people. So I'll just pause here for a second and let me take any questions if you have. Um, I have a question. I I also uh, previously uh, worked on some fingerprint recognition mm -hmm. systems, and to my recollection, these minutia of uh, you know bifurcations yep. and line endings in the angle of those are aren't they like like a standard way that uh, even manually people match fingerprints, right? Yeah, so manually when they match, so these uh, those are called uh, feature based recognition, but uh, when we do, when we focus only on the minutia points, so yeah. those are the points that are uh, difficult to identify while doing feature based recognition. So that's how we um, mo modify the, uh, the algorithm here and mm. uh, focus on those minutia points alone. Okay. okay. And, and when you said that they're stored in a database. Mm -hmm. uh, are those uh, data stored in a, because for the application of an ATM, they must be stored in like a network or cloud, right? Right, right, of course, yeah. So this application, as May mentioned, when we were developing for uh, um, a banking sector, so we need to have the bank's security pro protocols implemented as well. So that's how we were uh, focusing on uh, creating the database and modeling that. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. Yep. I think uh, Anusha, you might have already been mentioned. So what you are saying is reach and bifurcation, right? Whatever the technical terms you mentioned. Yep. So in one's life, throughout the lives, that one never changed, like you know, like from from child to death. Yes, yes. So the fingerprint is that's why they call it as immutability, and uh, uh, okay. it doesn't mutate. You know. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Uh, anyone have any queries? No, I okay, think you will continue. Yep. So um, when we when we look at the finger, so how does one's fingerprint differ from another? That's the basic question that everyone gets. So it is how the patterns are formed from the lines. So there are three types. First one is arches, the second one is whirl, and the third is loop. So when we look at the first one, arches, so this is the rarest type of fingerprint. In fact, about only 5% uh, of the world's population have this type of fingerprint. So, um, so it, is, it is the lack of cores, lines, and delta. So cores, lines, and delta are the technical terms of where the lines in our finger meet and end. So, um, within, so, so that, is, that is what it makes it unique. So within this pattern, there are two subcategories. So they, that, those are plain arches and tended arches, as you see in the slide. So when we look at the plain arch, so it is the raised edge characters characterize this pattern and they extend from one side of the finger to another in a continuous fashion. It doesn't break in between. So this pattern makes up to 5% of the total population in the world, making it as the rarest type. And the second one, the tented arches. So this is similar to the plain arch. The tented arch also has the raised uh, ridge uh, endings, if you see, but the distinct difference comes in the pitch of the raised edges. So the tented arch has a sharper edge compared to the plain arch, which forms a tent-like shape. So that's how it's named as tented arches. So these are the two um, types of, uh, two rarest types we find it. And the second is the world. So the world is the fingerprint pattern here. We, it, it accumulates about 25 to 35% of the total population. So this uh, ridge form a circular pattern. 
rather than tenths. And the third is loop. Um, the, um, so this is about the 60 to 70% 70, 70 of the population. Almost everyone um, would have this kind of uh, pattern in their uh, fingers. So this rigid, uh, so these form the ridges as elongated loops. So if you look at your finger, you'll have kind of loops, kind of pattern. So that is called as a loop, uh, loop type. So these are uh, what it makes one uh, fingerprint different from another. So let's take a closer look at what the algorithm does. Um, so a ridge ending is defined as the point where a ridge ends abruptly. So a ridge bifurcation is defined as the point where a ridge forks or diverges into branch ridges. So collectively, these features are called as menotia. So that's the elongated version of what we are looking here. So given the minutiae representation of fingerprints, mat matching a fingerprint against a database reduces to the problem of point matching. So the points marked in red uh, in the slide, so are th those are the minutiae points that are extracted from the original uh, fingerprint image where the user imprints while the, uh, over the biometric scanner. And they are uh, taken behind the algorithm, which we'll see in a while. So there's a couple of steps that uh, have, that's taken uh, that's take, that takes place behind the screens to get those red points, minutia points. And then once we get the minutia points, the in, uh, the input image from the scanner will be compared to those uh, images or the stored uh, fingerprints in the database. So if that if those two images match, then um, the machine would grant access um, for the user. Otherwise, it's going to deny it. So this is a very high level um, system design of how the entire um, system is working here. So these are the main components rather than. So, uh, so we have a sensor. Uh, so the first one is the user where we go in and keep a fingerprint into the biometric reader. So, um, so that when we, so that's the sensor is the reader that I mentioned. So we have a sensor which will be capturing the fingerprint from the user. The next is the minutia extractor. So extractor is uh, where the minutia points are extracted from the original fingerprint image. And the third is the minutia matcher. So matcher is the step where the extracted image is then compared to the database and gets the result of whether the fingerprint matches or it does not match with the uh, system. And then we get the results. Either you, uh, the system allows or denies the access uh, to the machine. So here for minutia detection, the location of each point is, um, is detected by the coordinates within a fingerprint. One, uh, once the points are marked from the original image, we apply the digital image processing technique, which we will be going to see in the uh, next few slides. They are the enhancement segmentation, binarization, a couple of uh, algorithms that's been applied behind to get the uh, minutia points, which would be uh, taken into, um, into the database too for the comparison. So that's how the minutia uh, detection will be working uh, on the, on, on, on for the matching. So this is a little, um, a high level comparison, a few comparison that I had put, put together with um, comparison to existing and the proposed system here. So the one on the left is uh, the existing and the one on the right is the proposed. So in the existing system, uh, as I mentioned, it is the image uh, feature-based image feature-based approach. And um, this, uh, this system uses minutia approach, which uh, as we saw, it takes the minutia points into calculation for matching. And, um, and overall the system, it takes a, a longer time in doing the identification in the uh, existing feature-based uh, system. While doing minutia, it is the it, it is an efficient system as well as the results are accurate. So um, accurate in the sense, I mean, when you get the minutia points, it doesn't it verifies only if all the points are matching. So if the match is ninety percent and above the system decides that the two fingerprints are matching. If the match percentage is less than 90%, the system decides that those two uh, fingerprints does not match. They are not the same person and it doesn't uh, allow the access to the machine. 
So uh, this is a little more detailed um, version of how the system flows. Um, so the first, as we see, the fingerprint is captured by the sensor and it will be extraction. So the feature extraction is the phase where we apply the algorithm. So that's where the process called image enhancement, image segmentation, image binarization would be taking place. So once all those uh, processes are applied to the fingerprint, to the input fingerprint, it would be sent for the comparison to the database, which we had already created before the uh, system begins. So once the feature has been extracted and the minutia points are taken into calculation, it will be compared to the database. And once we have the verification, it is either a match or it is an unmatch based on how the minutia points works. As mentioned, it's if it's 90% and above, it's a match and anything less than 90%, it's an unmatch. So let me pause here. Any, any questions that I can answer? Uh, Anusha, like it might be like outside the scope. Uh, so since that uh, this uh, fingerprint side, uh, it has been developed from like a long back, right? I mean, 19th, 19th century, right? Uh, so why do you think like uh, it's still not that minutia, whatever you are uh, mm -hmm. with patent? Uh, why do you think like it's still not like there are so many big companies here, right? Have not uh, till now like uh, never approached this uh, this. Uh, us uh, approach this uh, minutia like right. uh, mm -hmm. uh, identify the fingerprint uh, uh, identification. Is there anything like a uh, is this, is this really hard to identify or uh, or there's a better approach than this one? Like uh, is there like something uh, you can clarify? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, the existing fingerprint uh, algorithms that are in uh, in uh, in place they uh, they are called as feature based uh, matching. And uh, this system is called, uh, it uses an uh, algorithm which follows minutia points. So feature-based is how it, uh, so feature-based will be working on the entire fingerprint. So uh, it doesn't take into calculations the termination and where, uh, so let me, uh, so if we put in a simple uh, terms. So when we look at a fingerprint, so all those lines would, uh, would be ending at some particular point, but um, the feature-based uh, algorithm, which is the existing system, it doesn't take into calculation where the point ends. But the minutia, on the other hand, that is, it focuses only on those endings and where the lines meet. So making it more accurate in uh, comparing the uh, two fingerprints, one from the database and one from the scanner, making it accurate uh, in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think, uh, uh, correct me, Anil, if, if I'm wrong, okay. What actually uh, Anil is asking, was asking is, uh, the, the, what, what you mentioned is minutia based algorithm has not been implemented in the authentication, right, till now? So there are different algorithms uh, which uses minutia. So uh, this particular okay. algorithm has never been implemented in, uh, okay. in the banking sector. So, so if I say minutia based algorithm has not been implemented, then I'm wrong. So you are saying the minutia based algorithm has already been implemented, but this one is a little bit different than the different. one that has In, been implemented. Exactly, yeah. like how okay. it pre-processes and okay. uh, extracts the minutia points, that is different than okay. the existing systems. Got it, got it. Yeah, I think Anil was asking why the, comp why the bank or the finance company has not been implemented the minutia based algorithm. So you answer, right, it has already been implemented, but this approach is a little bit different than the existing one. Exactly, yep. Okay, and one, I'm just curious, right? So when you have implemented, because I have never implemented kind of like the, the image extraction on all those things, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of tool you guys have implemented for all those things? Yeah, yeah. So I'll be showing that in a couple of uh, slides. Okay. So, they, uh, the, uh, so the main uh, tool or the software that I use here is MATLAB. So MATLAB oh, okay, is okay. the uh, thing. And okay. the reader is an external device. So. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Anyone have any further queries? I'm, I'm good. All right. All right. That's good. Go on. So... This is a fo let's focus on the database part. So, um, we so in this system we used SQL for uh, this uh, for this project. So and of course the type of the database depends on the requirements. Um, for our requirements, we used uh, we 
initially built the system as an FVP. So for our requirements, we used Oracle DB to store the fingerprints, which were used for uh, verification after the minutia points were extracted from the original uh, original image. So those extraction process we will be seeing in uh, in uh, in the next few slides. So once we have the or, uh, the input image from the scanner, we do not directly use the image for uh, verification. We, we need to train the image. We need to train uh, as in do some uh, processing behind the scene in order to grab those minutia points. So uh, extracted minutia from the fingerprint are uh, together forming a, a point pattern in the plane. So therefore matching two minutia point patterns with each other are uh, considered as a 2D point pattern problem. So this point patterns are uh, are constructed only on position coordinates so those are the coordinates that has been uh, marked in um, in in little yellow squares in the image so the minutia type and orientation which provides extra information are disregarded due to the possible type alteration and noises in the orientation so it matches only those points which are visible which are highly visible and high with our high quality when we are training the image so the rest all um, rest all points or the rich uh, bifurcation and the uh, and the terminations are considered as noise in the image so which which is then used for uh, false minutia removal algorithm uh, later in the uh, in the processing so with this uh, information, a graph is constructed for training in uh, in the further in in further processes. So the trained set is now you. So the uh, the previous step was training the image. So now the trained set is uh, used for comparison with the input images for either granting or denying the access. So uh, the alteration that was disregarded, all those noise that were disregarded in the previous step, it can be used by varying. Um, by varying pressure between the fingertip and the sensor. And also by the binarization process, we would be able to detect those noises in the image. So uh, uh, it's, ju it's just an information. So low pressure can cause bifurcation minutia to appear as the termination minutia in the fingerprint image. On the other hand, when you put a high pressure on the, on the scanner, uh, when you do the fingerprint uh, imp impression, that can cause termination minutia to appear as a bifurcation minutia. So those are called as a false minutia. So it is not actual minutia point, but the pressure that we apply on the scanner will make it to look like a minutia. So those are the false minutia that we will be uh, disregarding as noises when we are training the image. So uh, so this is how the system works behind this uh, behind the screen. So when we once we capture the image, we would do the extraction. So here the pixel, the, the image is pixel to pixel. So once the image is taken and trained, we would know which are the proper minutia points and which are the false minutia points. So that's when we get the comparison here, uh, comparison between the database and the trained images. So once the trained image matches with the database, we have the verification. Either access is granted or the access is denied. So this is how the system actually works. So algorithm level design is where we see the process involved in the extracting the minutia points and comparing them to the images stored in the, in the database. So as we see here, three main processes are involved, pre-processing, minutia extraction, and post-processing. So uh, to simplify the task of minutia extraction and make it more easy and reliable, some pre-processing techniques are applied to the raw input images. So uh, under pre-processing, we have three sub-processes, image segmentation, enhancement, and binarization. So after the pre-processing step, the segmented and enhanced fingerprint is further processed to identify the main and distinctive minutia. Under minutia extraction, uh, there are two steps. Uh, the first is thinning and the minutia markings. And once we have those minutia markings on the on the trained images, we go for the post processing, which is where we do the false minutia removal. Let me pause here. Any any questions that I can answer? Yes. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned like a graph. 
-hmm. and we saw that um, the points are connected together yep. in a in a path kind of thing. Is it like a you know some kind of traveling salesman type? Yeah, so those are uh, the graph where the minutia points are marked in each fingerprint. So um, the back end noise, which is like, as I mentioned, the pressure, uh, the how, how much pressure we apply on the reader, it makes uh, true minutia points and false minutia points. So th that graph, the trained graph is where we detect which are the, what are the true minutia points in the image and what are the false minutia points based on how the um, pressure uh, each user applies to uh, get the fingerprint. And how did you say you uh, deal with like rotations of the finger? Yeah, so uh, so once um, the user imprints, so based on how much pressure the user applies to keep the, uh, to keep the fingerprint, the minutia markings would be uh, matched. So that's how it works behind. Okay. Is it like um, um, is it like I mean like the the point right? How when you when you mm -hmm. determine that point, I believe maybe Prakash was asking the, uh, the correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong. So uh, the point right? How you determine the point? Like uh, for example, when we go to the graph, there is the x-axis and y-axis, and we have the origin right. And from the origin, it, it the point is like this much far from the x-axis or y-axis, and then we determine that point right. Mm -hmm. So like uh, likewise, when you implement that algorithm and when you determine that point right how 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 you guys are i mean that one might be the little bit higher level you know like, uh, but yeah, like but, uh, yeah i can uh, explain it in a high level well okay so the the points are marked based on so when we see a fingerprint the there, there are minute lines which might come together meet at the point so those points are the minutia points so in a in a in in a regular eye, we will not be able to see those points. But when uh, when doing the image enhancement, segmentation, and binarization process that I mentioned in the previous slide, we'll be able to see where the where the lines end and where lines meet. So those are then extracted, which is called as a minutia points. So those are marked and put as a trained image graph, uh, which will be compared to the database behind. So uh, enhancement is like as a word itself says you will in enhance the images, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. then, uh, then what you are doing? Enhancement after the enhancement. Uh, en enhancement. Um, and segmentation. En sorry, sorry first, yeah. first is segmentation, right? You do yeah. the segmented. You you segment the image, mm -hmm. and once you segment all the images, like the thumbs or whatever image you find, then you are going to enhance each segmented image might be right. And once yeah. you enhance that image, what is the binarization? How you do the binarization? Yeah, I'll have, I have a slide on that. I can, I okay. can go. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions before we move to the process? Uh, yeah, I, I have same question on the top, on top of that like Prakash uh, said. So, uh, so this process, uh, you only rely on the points or uh, this is on top of the uh, feature-based uh, uh, you know, image uh, abstraction. Like feature it takes, based. Yeah, it takes into consideration the feature. So once the feature-based is the first step, so that is the regular uh, feature that we already have in place. So once we uh, go through that, it's like a second level of enhancement or second level of security protocol that we implement here. Okay, okay. Because that, that, that was my question. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, if you, if you rotate your hand and all those stuff. Exactly. Right, right. Of course. Points be points are gonna, right, right. And it, it could match to other people, right? So right. maybe in minus uh, that could be the unique, but the point could, um, if the calculation of the point is not correct, then uh, it could match to a lot of people. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so this is like a, a higher level of security protocol that we would be, we can implement on a regular um, image enhancement technique. Anything else? Okay. So the first step, uh, the first step uh, this is the uh, segmentation. So image segmentation is commonly used technique in uh, digital image processing to partition an image into multiple parts or regions. So image segmentation involves um, separating foreground from background. So this is a very uh, high level of what the uh, image segmentation is. So uh, segmentation of a fingerprint image is to decide which part from the image is associated with the foreground and which part is associated with the background. Due to the uh, nature of the fingerprint image and uh, the presence of noise, the decision for separation of these two regions is, is, is gonna be critical. 
So this fingerprint image can be affected by many conditions that perform the segmentation to be will be a challenging task. So the first problem is the presence of dust and grease in the scanner in the scanner's sensor. So the second one is the presence of some traces from the previous image acquisition. So and um, other other uh, um, issue that we might come across is the contrast of fingerprints that can be influenced from the dryness or the wetness of uh, every individual's finger. So for um, for for dry fingers, uh, fingerprint contrast is low, and for wet finger, the contrast is high. So all these factors will be taken into consideration while we do the image segmentation, while we separate the foreground and the background. So by this process, the segmentation, we overcome all these challenges. So that this is how the um, segmentation looks like when we do it in the MATLAB. So um, the, for, the, the, the area, the close and the open. So the, fo the foreground, the background are taken out and the ROI and the bound is the uh, outline of each fingerprint. So the ex uh, to the extent where it goes. So those are then separated from the foreground and background to overcome all the challenges that I mentioned, you know, uh, the wet finger, dry finger, every individual's finger or some uh, fingerprint might have been left behind from the previous user. So all these are considered as noises while we separate the foreground and background. So image segmentation is a process where we overcome all these challenges. So next we go into enhancement. So uh, image enhancement is uh, the process of adjusting the digital image so that um, the results are more suitable for display or, or further image analysis in our case. So a fingerprint image is firstly uh, enhanced before the features contained in it uh, or to be detected or extracted. A well enhanced image will provide a clear separation between the valid and the spurious features. So spurious features are those minutiae points that are uh, created due to noise or artifacts that are not actually part of the fingerprint. As we mentioned earlier, how the pressure of uh, each might affect the false and true minutiae points. Now that our image has been enhanced, we move to the next step called the binarization. So binarization is where the enhanced image is binarized and thinned to make it more suitable for feature extraction, which is the next step. So image binarization is the process of taking a grayscale image and uh, converting it to black and white, reducing the information contained within the image from gray to black, black and white, which is a binary image. So zeros and ones binary Im image. So this is the task commonly performed when trying to extract an object from an image. So here the points are extracted from the print. So uh, this method of minutia extraction is also known as uh, skeletonization based minutia extraction. So as we see, the name comes from how it looks like a skeleton in the image on the right side. So this is the process where we uh, do the thinning of the image to see more cleared markings of where we have the minutia points. So the binarized image is then thinned using an algorithm that removes the pixels from ridges until the ridge ridges are one pixel wide. So um, since it is an enhanced uh, image here, it's more thick, but it's just one pixel wide after uh, doing the thinning process. So after the extracting the minutia from the enhanced bi um, uh, binarized and thinned image, we do the post-processing step. So after the thinning process, we go for the minutia extraction. So here, um, a fingerprint is, uh, consists of two basic types. So minutia, uh, minutia um, rich endings and bifurcations, which are taken into ca uh, calculation for the minutia points. So the minutia and their relative positions to each other are then used for comparisons. So it is therefore evident that um, the more accurate the process of extraction of minutia, the more accurate and reliable the entire uh, automated fingerprint recognition system becomes. So, so when you see here, um, an accurate representation of the fingerprint image is critical to automate the identification system because most deployed commercial large scale systems are dependent on feature-based matching, which is the existing system. 
Among all the fingerprint features, minutia point features with uh, corresponding orientation maps and uh, are unique enough to discriminate among the fingerprints robustly. So this, when applied on top of the feature-based matching, it provides a higher level of security protocol to the, um, um, to the vendors. So in order to achieve a high accuracy minutia with, um, with very quality of fingerprint images, the segmentation algorithm needs to separate the foreground from noisy background, which includes all the uh, ridge valleys, termination regions, which are not in the background. So here the minutia detection algorithm needs to locate efficiently and accurately the minutia points. So once we complete this pre-processing steps, we'll be having all the minutia markings as we see here, um, they are marked in red. So those are the minutia points of the uh, input image. So now we go to the post-processing stage. So on successful completion of the pre-processing techniques for fingerprint image uh, enhancement, fingerprint minutia are extracted. But before going to the process of fingerprint matching, an important post-processing step of removing the false minutia should be performed. So uh, the enhancement techniques discussed before are not only expected to perform correctly in all cases. So, uh, so while doing the background, especially after applying segmentation techniques, the image will have new gaps between the fingerprints. So um, the gaps where we uh, do the skeletonization process. So to encounter these undesirable effects in the segmented image, a simple post-processing technique is carried out, which is called the false minutia removal. So, so this is uh, a high level. Um, um, so the first minutia points, which are close. So when we, when you see here, when uh, the first, the two, uh, points. So here they are 10 pixels apart. They are ignored to avoid extracting the false minutia. So initially some simpler and uh, compact set of fuzzy rules. So uh, in this particular algorithm, a fuzzy algorithm has been used to remove the false minutia. So I'll just tell uh, 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 two rules, which uh, on a high level, which has been applied. Of course, it's been coded in the thing, in the code. So first rule um, that we applied is if the distance between um, the termination and bifuric uh, bifurcation is less than D. So D is the average inter ridge distance between uh, two neighboring ridges, which is in, uh, computed in the code. So if those distance uh, is less than um, the inter ridge distance, the removal of uh, minutia would be taking place. That though, so when the, when the first condition is satisfied, it is called as the false minutia. So that those are not the true minutia points. In that case, we would be removing that particular minutia point. So that is how we uh, remove the false minutia. So the other rule that we uh, had put in place is when the distance between um, the two bifurcation is less than D. Again, D is the inter ridge distance. Then again, so when that is taken place, we consider that as the false minutia and that particular point would be removed. So these, uh, so these are two simple rules that I brought it up today, but there are a couple other rules which have been uh, coded to check if they are true minutia or false minutia and based on those conditions, the minutia points are removed. So this is, a, a, this is the really simplest way that I can put the, uh, the formulae, uh, of course, I cannot bring all the computations here. Of course, it's gonna, it will not make sense without looking at the code. So this is a very simplified version on how the minutia are calculated. So let me pause here. I think I've been going for a long time. Yeah, uh, one of the questions I had is uh, the, like with all these um, processing steps, Mm -hmm. um you know you what is the improvement you see in um accuracy compared to previous methods or uh, how and how do you measure the accuracy like uh you know are there like false positives false mm -hmm. negatives and so on yeah yeah so, uh, so the pre-processing and the minutia extraction are the main phase where we uh, take the image. So pre-processing as we uh, segmentation, enhancement and binarization. So uh, when, when we see a fingerprint without doing all these processes, it's gonna have too much of noise in the, in the background. So in order to make the background and the foreground separate, we do the segmentation. 
once we have the two images separated the foreground and background we go for the enhancement enhancement is where we enhance the image both the images the foreground and the background so the foreground is the main image that we'll be focusing on because there's the, the fingerprint is in the foreground so once we enhance the image we do the thinning so those skeleton like um, image that we saw is the thinning process so once we thin the images the minutia points are more readable so on, uh, that's when the minutia extraction phase comes into place where uh, the algorithm will uh, point out the minutia points and the last phase the false removal a set of fuzzy rules has been coded so when the conditions it will check for those conditions so when the distance for example as i mentioned when the distance inter ridge distance is less than the termination uh, points then it is considered as a false minutia point those are not the actual minutia points so the algorithm does not consider that as a minutia point and it doesn't uh, take that point into consideration for verification to the database so that's how it's uh, going to make the decision so we, let's say we had an algorithm without that false minutia removal right and what would it, its accuracy be and with the false minutia removal, what would be the accuracy? Yeah, so with uh, without doing the false removal, uh, we came to a conclusion about 88% uh, accurate. But after we applied the false minutia removal fuzzy logic into it, we were able to get it around 94.8% of accuracy. Okay. And uh, so another question I had about this accuracy is, mm -hmm. Um, like I imagine that to get, um, to test this algorithm, you'd need like lots and lots of fingerprints, right? Exactly. Yep. So how do you get that? Yeah. So initially we, uh, started with, uh, having a couple of, uh, a closed circle fingerprints, and then we extended into our, um, as I mentioned, we started this and when I was an undergrad, so we, uh, spanned it out to our department and then college and then inter-college, so on. So that's how we um, grow, grow our database. So, so how many data points uh, are required or have you tested with? So we have tested around 7,000, approximately close to 8,000. Cool. And then do you, in the accuracy, uh, do you face challenges about, you know, what's more important, like exactly. uh, yeah, false yeah. positives or, you know, false negatives yeah. or? Yes, yeah, as mentioned, false, false positives are, were really a big challenging. So as mentioned, it was like only around, we didn't even cross 90% of accuracy with false positives. So when we were uh, discussing on trying to implement the fuzzy logic on, so to come up with the logic on how we can remove those false positives were one of the great uh, biggest challenges that we uh, came across while doing this. Even applying, uh, even, uh, so right now we have applied around 13 to 14 rules for removing the uh, false uh, positives. So even after we applied those logic, we were able to only, across 94.8% of accuracy. So we are working on how to increase the accuracy of the system. So, uh, so by false positive, I was thinking like, you know, um, is, is this my fingerprint? Then uh, I give someone else's fingerprint that looks similar and it says, yes, it is. And that's like a false positive and false negative would be, is this my fingerprint? I give my fingerprint, but my hand is a little bit wet or it has, um, or okay. I didn't press it properly or I rotated my finger too much. Or then... yeah, that's exactly it. Yep, false negative and false positive. Yep. So, so what? What is? what was more challenging with respect to that? So uh, as mentioned, so the accuracy, we, the highest uh, accuracy we went was 94.8. So that was by uh, applying the um, removal of false positives. So uh, as you mentioned, comparison two fingerprints and which, which are almost alike. So the other challenge 
is on how the as mentioned earlier uh, on the how each one's pressure will be affecting the uh, reader so if i keep my the first time when i uh, open an account with a bank i keep my finger or uh, i give my really hard pressure on my finger to uh, in the database but while accessing the atm uh, while i might be in a hurry and just keep my uh, uh, a little pressure i might apply a little pressure so those are the false uh, positives so comparing those pinocia points is uh, is a challenging task in the in the algorithm to code it out so um yeah i i would have thought in like a banking type application that this is not the only form of identification right they would need to bring a card or um you know they would need one other form of identification yeah right. yeah so yeah by by default we will be having card so we were trying to uh, replace this in uh, in the place of the four digit code that we enter so once we um, put in our card rather than having to enter the four digit uh, number uh, we would be having to uh, uh, use the fingerprint so that that was the design of the system so this is slightly outside of what you presented but um... I was curious. You mentioned like trying to patent it. Did mm -hmm. you did you face any um, challenges um, on uh, trying to patent it? Yeah. So the accuracy of the system is a challenge that we are coming across. So and since we are focusing on the banking sector, the protocol, uh, the security protocols should be high and. Um, so we at least, uh, so one of the uh, organization that we approached, they said uh, there should be a minimum of 97% of accuracy. So that's uh, that, uh, that's the challenge before we get a patent, so. Uh, Anusha, like, uh, yeah, yeah uh, they were patent, right? So I was going uh, going through the uh, Google some source and I see that there, there, there is already like a Manisha point, uh, point maps, Manisha point maps, uh, so uh, yours is also similar kind of like point map, but uh, it, it has different algorithms and different way to get the accuracy, right? Right. So that, that's where you get the uh, patent? Yes, yes, that's the patent thing, yeah. Even the other people also uh, use the same uh, uh, minus here point math. It's just- So the, the algorithm that we are using is different than the existing system. So the, uh, that's the uh, pattern that we are going to get for the algorithm. Oh, oh, oh for the algorithms. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Anusha, uh, when you guys like remove the noise uh, between the two reads, right? You, you are measuring the distance and on the basis of the distance, you are removing the noise, correct? Yep. So that things that, that those rules, those rules has already been uh, like uh, already been verified by someone or already been given by someone as a theory or you guys are yourself like uh, giving the rules and just testing. So out of... 14 rules that we had implemented uh six were already in existing in existence okay. so six uh, rules were in existence the other set of rules were the one which we uh, did some res research and uh, put into place and that's i, think, we we, I think those rules itself you can patent those rules right yeah you know, yeah, like yeah. So, yeah yeah <laughs> right so six rules you are what you are you guys are doing is you guys are introducing the new rules which itself you can patent on. Yeah, eight rules that we are introduced here are new uh, rules and we are trying to patent. So uh, rather than just patenting the rules, we are trying to even patent the um, algorithm that we are using. Okay. Okay. So that one is inside the algorithm. Itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Any other questions? Is still remaining or? Ah, oh, that's it, Sonic. Yeah, I'm oh, done. That's it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Anyone have any further queries? So, uh, so with fingerprints, there are like um, the first application that comes to mind for me is like more forensic type applications, and um, I don't know in parts of the world where there's no signature, mm. uh, you know, people use fingerprints for. Uh, on on paper paper right. so digitizing government documents or uh, you know uh, rec records 
kind of comes into uh, mind with with a bank um you know like sometimes uh, people take you know my wife takes my card and they go to the atm and get the money if you know the pin code then you can get it you have the card you know the pin code um and that's i i i tended to think that that was a legitimate application mm-hmm. and that was not like a false application of the technology is because um you know the family members can sometimes use the card or is that like not a legitimate application or is there different parts of the world where uh, how did you come to banking as a possible use case for this technology yeah so um while we were uh, researching on where the application can be used uh, so um this uh, this application in the banking sector has, was not implemented in uh, india so when we started uh, when I was an undergrad, when we started this, we were focusing on um, on banking. That's how we um, came into banking sector. So few banks and uh, we did a comparison to a few banks in Singapore. So a few uh, banks in Singapore, they had um, the authentication via fingerprint. So uh, that's how we got the idea of why don't we try it uh, in, in the banking sectors here. And uh, we did approach one of the banks um, in uh, in India, and um, we did uh, give them the give uh, give uh, explain and uh, and uh, give them the algorithms working. So um, if everything goes well with our patent, so um, think the bank might be implementing our uh, system. Cool. Thank you. Cool. If no one have any queries, uh, thank you, Anusha. Yeah. Thanks for describing enhancement biometric for the ATM. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so our next webinar session might be going to, uh, it's not finalized, but like most probably it will be on this month is August, right? So September 2nd, uh, it's, it's going to be the same Saturday weekend at 9 p.m. EST. So that one is like Purshottam Mupunu is going to give the presentation. So he is supposed to be here. I don't know why he, he was unable to join, uh, but he's going to present uh, the, I think he's going to provide the uh, distributed architecture topic related stuff. Uh, so on September 2nd, 9 PM, he's going to give the presentation on distributed architecture. Okay, and if you guys have any th- any queries uh, any queries regarding today's session or today's presentation, let me know, or you can communicate with Anusha as well. Anusha, if you don't mind, I could give your uh, email, or you could. I'm not sure whether you join in our uh, LinkedIn group or not. I, I am sorry, yeah. Oh, you are there, okay. Yeah. yeah. Then 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 Anil, I'm not sure whether you are in the LinkedIn group or not. If not, like I could. I could provide you the uh, group related information. So you guys can come over there and ask anything to answer.